Hello and welcome everyone, it's me MB and I'm back with another video. In this video I'll show you how to build the 3.13 Stormcall Elementalist. This is what the final build looks like and I will show you how to get there. I hope you enjoy, let's start. So, first things first, what is Stormcall? Stormcall is actually a lightning skill gem that deals lightning damage in a large area to the enemies. The Stormcall actually comes with a huge, huge, huge disadvantage. So there's a big downside of Stormcall and it is the duration tag actually. So you can see the base duration of Stormcall is 1.5 seconds. I'll show you what that means. I'll hit the storm call right now. And this is how long it takes the storm call to actually deal damage. You can see it takes forever, let's be honest. To avoid this or to let's say lower this number and make it hit more quicker or quicker, you can actually add lesser duration or less duration. You can see this is storm call level one, this is less duration level one. So that's already quite some difference. To even trigger this spell faster, you could go for the Eternal Lab uh, Helm Enchantment, which is reduced storm call duration. And then this looks like that. That's quite fast in my opinion. And what you can do is you can pretty much kind of precast areas that you might reach in the next couple seconds so if i'm going towards this i can already target there go there you can see what i'm doing and then this shit is precasted and everything dies in the area so that's just some basic information about storm call and how to actually overcome the massive downside of storm call the duration tag so here we go, this is pretty much the final tree of the build. Um, I have allocated almost all my passive skill points, which is like, this is a level 97 character that you can see right there. Um, it has pretty much allocated everything that is meh, yeah, necessary to, to achieve uh, these damage numbers. You can see my total DPS is at 2.6.5.9 without flasks. So how could this actually be achieved i can show you the configuration i'm using power charges i'm using frenzy charges i do have tailwind um i the enemy is chilled the enemy is shocked um the enemy is near me so my helm actually reduces some of the resistances which actually does not really work you can see it on the number um the exposure, exposure type on the target is lightning, which comes from the wave of conviction, actually. So the target is cursed with conductivity. And I do have arcane surge. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, this is the damage the DPS for from one single circle of storm call. Storm call is actually able to overlap, so you can actually deal damage in overlapping areas. I'll swap to the game really quick to show you what that means. So to demonstrate the overlapping effect of storm call, I pretty much target Jun here, and then I'll hit the storm call. And as you can see, when my intensify ramps up the circles get smaller but they get tighter together so the lesser aoe you actually have the bigger the overlapping areas and that's pretty much what we want to utilize because we want to have as many overlapping areas as possible and as you can see i know it's kind of hard to see when i spam this but you will always have like at least three overlapping areas right away and if you had the anomalous conch effect i'm quite sure you can almost have five overlapping areas so that's one storm call 
times 5 because of 5 overlapping areas and it looks just insane. I have to mention that I'm using the Divine Storm Call effect. So um, this is how it looks like without. I think it's pretty sweet as well. So back to POB and I open my calculator and you can see the number has changed from 26 something to 27 something. Uh, why did this happen? Um, I just realized that I had the wrong arcane search uh, skill gem active. I had a level seven, but I'm actually using a level 10 one. So that's basically, if you have five overlapping areas, you will have 2.71 million DPS per circle times five, which will ramp up to a whooping 13.5 million shaper DPS. And that's pretty insane. And now when you um, think about the leak and the leak mechanic that we'll actually get, we will be uh, in a circle to find several bosses at the same time. If they kind of cluster uh, and stack on each other and you can um, shred in there with some uh, math with uh, some massive storm calls, that might actually do some damage. And I'm pretty sure that this uh, is not the worst um, setup for killing bosses actually. Further, I may add that this is not really the final version um, of POB because uh, POB has not updated the um, reworked skill gems right yet. Um, you can see the damage is still um, 406 to 753, but this should be way higher. It should be something like um, 510 to 974. Further, they will have a better damage effectiveness of added damage uh, from 100 to 130%. So basically um, that will actually affect the damage way more. And we can kind of simulate this um, if we add a added lightning damage support gem to this build. And let's just say what we need. We need like a level 17 or so. Well, level 16 maybe yeah this kind of let's say yeah let's just use this one uh, it's not it's not quite accurate but you get the idea um if the well, storm call skill gem will actually get reworked and in pub then we will see something like three million per circle which then of course adds up to be 15 million when you have five overlapping areas and you can see in my pub of the end game version i'm already using the conk effect with the anomalous uh, alternate quality so the area of this um is quite uh, the area uh, the, the reduction of the area is quite huge if i use the default one i have 18 aoe uh, radius and if i use the anomalous i have 16. And we just learned that um, the smaller the AOE effect, the better for overlapping. So keep that in mind when you try to build this character. So now that you know everything about the offense, um, I'll show you how to build up the defense. And this defense actually has multiple layers and I'll show you all of them. First of all, you will have steel skin on your left mouse click and it's linked to second wind so you have it pretty quick the cooldown is relatively low second you will have this frost shield it looks cool and it actually absorbs a ton of damage so steel skin and frost shield on top of that you have the golems which are stone golem chaos golem lightning golem and ice golem Chaos Golem is pretty cool for the Fizz reduction. Stone Golem actually gives some life regeneration. So, and on top of that, you will get the new Bastion of Elements um, keynote from the Ascendancy rework. What this actually does, I'll show you in POB. So, when allocated the Bastion of Elements, you will have the Primal Ages, which can take 100 damage per allocated notable passive. So, this is a shield that recharges or that charges itself due to, due to duration. 
And the more notables you have allocated, um, the more it will be able to absorb. So 100 per notable. And I can tell you on a character like this with um, like 120 passive skill points allocated, you'll pretty much have something like 30 to 35 allocated notables. So this um, is actually a range from, let's say, 3000 to 3500 uh, damage that can be absorbed from the primal ages. Guys, that's pretty insane and that's another layer of defense that we actually need. Further, I talked about this in my prior uh, video, um, our minions, it's now no longer a pain in the ass to resummon them when they die in the map because when they die, they actually just get resummoned uh, four seconds after being killed. So that's a nice 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 buff as well okay so and now that we have talked about the end game version this is pretty much how you get there and you can see this is um the build that i've put together um earlier uh, yesterday um this is the level 81 elementalist with um yeah the crappy gear and all that and um this is pretty much the skill tree how it looks like before you go full into power charges and sh and such i'd suggest that you go um that you actually allocate the power charges um pretty much at the end um when you have uh, like everything else because um you need some layer of defense and you need some recharge um or some uh, energy shield recovery actually to sustain the downside of the shimmeran which is 200 lightning damage per second per power charge if you have dealt critical strike recently so this is pretty huge um, debuff um, and the more power charges you have you will actually drain more and um, for that reason you should be quite solid before you start um, investing all into power charges but let's be honest Power charges is pretty much where the damage com comes from in combination with Shimmeran, of course. So this is pretty much how it looks like in an early state of mapping, level 81, as mentioned before. And I can show you like the first 42 talent, tree, uh, talent points. Um, this will pretty much look like this. You just start, you pick some spell damage, you go to some life mana and energy, uh, some life mana. And you go to life mana, you go to life, life, and life up here. Further, you pick elemental overload, um, and you go to golem commander just to get another golem. Um, and your first lap points will be in leech of the primordial. So if you have leech of the primordial and you have golem commander, you'll pretty much have, um, you'll be able to summon three golems right with level 34. Um, further, I really don't suggest to level with Stormcall right when you can buy the skill gem. The skill gem is available at level 12, so relatively early in the game, but as I mentioned in the video, you have the downside of the base duration and it feels relatively clunky when you try to use it right away. Um, my, in my opinion, it really does make sense. Um, it doesn't make sense to use Stormcore before you at least have less duration support. Because if you have less duration support, which you get at level thirty-one, then you will kind of feel that Stormcore gets way smoother. But to be honest, um, although I really like Storm Call, I wouldn't suggest to use it as a leveling skill right away. I'll suggest that you use uh, something like Crackling Lands. Crackling Lands will get updated and reworked as well, and the damage is pretty respectable as well. And um, you have the benefit that Crackling Lands actually needs almost the same um, allocated passives on the talent tree so you can actually just continue to follow my leveling guide and use crackling lands uh, until you will convert to storm call 
and um, that's pretty much what I would do when I'll um, level this. I'll go for Crackling Lands and then swap to Stormcrawl, let's say with level 45 or something like that. Maybe you can snipe a cheap helm with the helm enchant um, early in the league and um, then you can start earlier, but I don't think that you have to rush into Stormcrawl just because you think it's super cool i mean i i appreciate i appreciate that and i am <laughs> absolutely on your side i think that stone Cold is pretty cool but um it really feels clunky when you use it right when you can have it so therefore just use crackling lands for the leveling process until you let's say yeah as mentioned at 45 you can still swap so let's just go on and i show you the next step on the leveling tree which is pretty much allocated passive um, 68 then you can um, already start to kind of get some points into crit and all that but basically just pick more life and energy shield right here life right here and that's basically it if you are at this stage already then you can slowly convert your build to this and from this you go straight to the end game option so i have linked or i have um the basically the support links of stormcall won't change at all but as you have seen on my um, end game version i am using or i will use the alternate quality of conk effect further the awakened version of spell echo and the awakened version of spell cascade but keep in mind awakened spell cascade and awakened spell echo is insanely expensive maybe you will be able to craft or to to gamble with uh, the skill gems or with the support gems with harvest craft um, i don't know if you remember but there has uh, there was a chance that you can actually um, update a level 20 support gem to the corresponding awakened uh, gem with harvest craft and um, yeah if they add this again then there w might be a way that those skill gems will be a little bit cheaper but if not you just have to pay yeah, just have to pay this amount of, of cash to to actually buy them but you can pretty much uh, use this skill with the normal spell echo and the normal spell cascade as well it works just fine i promise okay and before we finish the video i'll just fly over the skill links and uh, show you what i have in my final version of the build so in the gloves wave of conviction Hex touch support, conductivity, and flame dash. Weapon, Herald of Ice, which I no longer use. Herald of Thunder and Wrath on the shield. Feed and Frenzy, Summon Stone Golem, and Culling Strike. So Feed and Frenzy will actually make the Stone Golem aggressive, and once the enemy is below 10% or at 10% life, they will just instantly kill them. So that's pretty cool for bossing. On the helmet, Ice Golem. Chaos Golem, Lightning Golem, and Meat Shield support. You can actually go for Elemental Army support as well. That depends on you. In the boots, Steel Skin, Second Wind support, Frost Shield, and Arcane Surge. The Frost Shield procs Arcane Surge, and the Second Wind support actually supports Steel Skin and Frost Shield as well. And my main sixth link is Stormcall, which should be Val Stormcall. Intensify, Awaken Spell Cascade, but you could use Spell Cascade, Less Duration Support, Spell Echo Support, or Awaken Spell Echo Support, and Conk Effect, which should normally be uh, the anomalous Conk Effect for the lesser effect, the less area of effect. Okay, guys, and that's pretty much all I have to say about the build. If you think that I forgot something or if you are missing information and you want me to add them in, um, please feel free to contact me and just comment in this video right below the video. Just comment. Use the fact that I have a really, really small YouTube channel and I'll be able to answer almost every question myself. <laughs> 
Uh, just kidding. I have tons of monkeys to do that for me. But I hope you enjoyed the build. I hope you liked the guide. And if you did, please consider subscribing. But at least give me a like and write something in the comments. And I hope you will all have a beautiful and perfect leak start. We will see us in another video, I promise. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.